Welcome back to the Budget Gamer channel where we bring you critical and in-depth reviews of just about every indie game we can get our hands on and today we're going to be taking a look at Skelly Celeste which just came out on the PS4, Xbox and of course the Nintendo Switch. The general gameplay can be seen as very similar to other titles like The Binding of Isaac or even Enter the Gungeon. However, that comparison might not exactly be fair. Diving straight into the game though, Skelly has a story of biblical proportions, because literally it's peeled straight out of the Book of Revelation. More or less, there was an ancient prophecy that says one day the inhabitants of hell would grow too many in number and would overrun their hellish confines. So as an emissary of heaven itself, it's your job to intrude into hell and slaughter every one of the hellish minions you can find to prevent this inevitable happening from happening. And after a very brief and somewhat comical tutorial letting us know how to control our character, dodge, use our melee and ranged weapons, we're thrown into a game select screen that exposes us to a wealth of different gameplay styles. But despite the different titles that each gameplay style has been given that might leave you questioning exactly what you might be getting yourself into, they can generally be summed up as wave clear, dungeon clear, arena clear, and even a card game. But barring the card game itself, regardless of which mode of gameplay you choose to dive into, most of it's going to seem like wave clear combat. You'll either be moving from room to room, pit to pit, or arena to arena to challenge a handful of randomly generated mobs to make it to the next room, pit, or arena. However, the entirety of the gameplay doesn't consist of merely slaughtering mindless numbers of mobs in order to rack up that score multiplier, but there are actually, even in the wave clear and arena clear style combats, a wealth of item drops, special levels, and bosses to face. More or less though, just starting out the game, you'll be limited to 5 projectile rounds and your melee weapon. Of course, 5 rounds of ammo can easily be used within the first few seconds of the game whether you hit the enemies or not, and that brings us to exactly how to get more. Refilling your ammo stores is actually done through killing an enemy with your melee weapon, which while effectively providing you with unlimited ammo does put you in harm's way quite often. And additionally, while the fairly broad complement of enemies does have its own unique and predictable attack animations, one of the possibly more unfortunate portions of Skelly Select's combat system is that you also are susceptible to damage on touch. So while you may be focused on avoiding each individual character's specific attack animations, as the game doesn't actually provide any sort of feedback for losing health, it's really easy to run or dodge into an enemy and lose your health without even knowing it. But should you be able to actually make it further into the game and get some pretty decent item drops, there are a lot of ways to remedy this situation. Not only are the dungeons, areas, and arenas randomly generated, but so are all of the potential item drops. Which means while of course you could open a chest or kill an enemy and get an extra heart or refill some of your ammunition, there are also item drops that can change your pistol into a spread shot or increase the length or the width of your axe attack, as well as ones that can make your health bar go all the way to the end of the screen, as well as your ammunition. And while finding the occasional item that'll increase your character's speed or even grant you a one-time respawn might be pretty awesome, there are two item drops that you can gain that especially if you get them in combination seem a little too OP. And these are the Minion Spawn and the Eternal Flame. The Eternal Flame surrounds you with three little flaming minions that'll orbit you and kill any enemy they touch and disappear shortly after. However, moving to a new arena or a new dungeon room causes all three to respawn. However, the biggest advantage you can get, and probably my favorite random ability, is the Minion Spawn. This item spawns a little AI minion that'll cruise around the screen and viciously attack anything it sees, all while taking no enemy damage. And this effectively means that even in boss fights, regardless of how crazy things get, all you really have to do at that point is focus on dodging. So yeah, while most item drops might just decrease the difficulty of the game or give you some advantage by increasing your ammo or increasing your health, there are certain combinations of items that can be randomly dropped, purchased at in-game shops, or even exchanged at one of the bathhouses that can actually become pretty game-breaking. But on that note, regardless of which style of gameplay you choose to engage in, all of them are actually roguelike, meaning if you die or even if you beat the game, everything starts over on a clean slate. However, there are actually a couple of things besides your score that do stay there if unlocked through gameplay. And those are aesthetic upgrades such as masks or hats that you might find a minion wearing in a dungeon, and if you kill it, you can take it for yourself. Another permanence unlockable for the game is actually playable characters. And while the specifics of the game mechanics will stay exactly the same combat-wise, each character will bring a slight new dynamic to the game. And whether that's in the way that they dodge, or the way that they shoot their pistol, or the way that they swing their axe, it won't exactly change how the game is played, but it might provide the player with a more suitable preference. And the last permanent unlockable deals with the last mode of gameplay, which is the card game. And despite its hellish theme, I'm pretty sure that any classic gamer that sits down with it for more than a few minutes is gonna start reminiscing about Final Fantasy VIII. Pretty much lining up cards with a higher number on the connecting edge makes that card able to be captured, 
and going turn for turn against the game's AI, the one with the most captured cards at the end wins. And not only does the game tally up the score for the most wins in a row, each time you win against the AI when it has a card in its hand that you don't have, that card can be awarded to you as a new playable card for future games. But moving away from all the various mechanics of different modes of gameplay, the game is pretty unified in its visuals and its audio. But while definitely novel and reminiscent of what we would assume a hellscape to look like, the visuals are consistently dark and don't really provide that much diversity. Additionally, the audio quality of the game is good and the chip tunes are actually really well crafted and a little catchy, but they're very light and upbeat which serves to both contradict the game and accent it. And all in all though, I can easily say that I did enjoy my time playing through Skelly Select that does come with one caveat. Every mode of gameplay barring the card game itself is pretty much just slaughter as many enemies as you can in a pseudo wave style combat. And even when looking at what could be considered the game's two largest side features of racking up high scores and unlocking collectibles, there are no online leaderboards for score competition, and as the game is actually pretty short, most of the unlockables can be achieved in only a couple of hours. And while I definitely can't say that Skelly Select is a bad game by any stretch of the imagination, and it's definitely good as a casual time sink, especially on a console like the Nintendo Switch, it may be a game that's better suited for a lower price point. So if you enjoyed the review or found it helpful, feel free to throw me a comment or a like to show your support, and don't forget to click that little bell icon when you subscribe to stay updated with the latest content. There are new and unique indies coming out literally every single day, so there's always going to be some new game to find out about right here. But since I can only cover a few reviews a week until the channel gets a little bit bigger, you can figure out which reviews might be coming up next by checking the announcements board on our new Discord channel. But anyway, this has been Budget Gamer, so as always, thanks for watching.